Welcome to the second section in this course. In this section, we'll cover convolutional neural network with TensorFlow Keras. We'll learn the following topics in this section. First, we'll go over what are convolutional neural networks and what are the different components. Then, we're going to learn about TensorFlow Keras layers and more specifically, the most common layers found in CNNs. Then, we're going to look at TensorFlow Keras functional API by constructing functional models and then training and evaluating their performance. Finally, we're going to look at image pre-processing and augmentation and look at different image transformations and augmentation methods. Let's get started with lesson one. What are CNNs? CNNs are very similar to ordinary fully connected neural networks. They are made up neurons that have learnable weights and biases. Each neuron receives some inputs, performs a dot product, and optionally follows it with a non-linearity function. The whole network represents a single differentiable score function. This function takes in as input raw image pixels on one end and computes class scores at the other. The output scores are fed into the loss function to compute the multinomial class probabilities. So what makes a CNN special? The CNN architecture makes the explicit assumption that the inputs are images, which allows us to encode certain properties into the architecture related to the image features. These then make the forward function more efficient to implement and vastly reduce the amount of parameters in the network. Let's now jump right into the notebook. Here are the main components found in CNN. You've got the input matrix, which is the image representation in a 4D tensor. You also have the output class call. The model is composed of convolutional layers, fully connected layers. That includes activation functions, max pooling layers, dropout layers. And then it ends with a softmax layer for multinomial class probabilities. And you also have the loss function. As a review, we're going to go over the fully connected layer first, before we dive in into commercial layers. A fully connected dense layer is the most basic layer in your networks. Neurons in a fully connected layer have full connection to all the activation in the previous layer. The layer basically computes a weighted sum of the previous layer followed by an activation function for each neuron in the output layer. As you can see here, this equation represents the computation for a single neuron. The weighted sum across all neurons can be computed with the matrix multiplication between the input vector and the weight matrix, followed by a bias offset. Fully connected layers are not spatially located since there is no weight sharing, as we'll see later for commercial layers. Therefore, the input to a fully connected layer must be reshaped to a vector. Here we have an example of a fully connected layer where you have the input layer, the output layer, and the hidden layer represents the fully connected layers. You can see that each neuron is weighted sum of all the previous neurons in the layer with a bias and then pass through an activation function. The convolutional layer is the core building block of a CNN. The layer's parameter consists of a set of learnable filters or kernels, which have a small receptive field, but extends to the full depth of the input volume. During the forward path, each filter is convolved across the width and height of the input volume, computing the dot product between the entries of the filter and the input, and producing a two-dimensional activation map of that filter. As a result, the network learns filters that activate when it detects some specific type of feature at some special position in the input. Stacking the activation maps for all filters along the depth dimension forms the full output volume of the commercial layer. As we can see in this diagram, the input here is a 32 by 32 image with three color channels. As you convolve the feature maps across the image, you create an output volume, in this case, with an output dimension of 5. Convolutional neural networks take the advantage of the fact 
that the inputs consist of images, and they constrain the architecture based on this assumption. In particular, unlike regular neural networks, the layers of a ConvNet have neurons arranged in three dimensions. Convolutional layers provide three big benefits for computer vision problems. First, location invariance. Because of the sliding filters, the exact location of important features is not important, which allows the model to generalize better to unseen images. We'll see later that in pooling, we also provide some kind of invariance. 2. Local connectivity. Commercial networks exploit spatially local correlations by enforcing local connectivity patterns in the receptive field between neurons of adjacent layers. This is in contrast to fully connected layers that do not take into account the spatial structure of the input. 3. Compositionality. CNN layers are generally stacked on top of each other, allowing the model to construct incrementally high representation of the image, making classification tasks easier at the last layer. In this image, you can see how we can take a kernel of 3x3 and convolve it around an image with a stride of 1, and turning an image that is 5x5 five five into a convolved feature that is of 3x3. Three three. Now let's look at the activation layer. The activation function is a layer which applies an element-wise non-linearity to the output of a parametrized layer, such as the convolutional layer or the dense layer. The most commonly used activation for CNN is the ReLU function. The ReLU function stands for Rectified Linear Units. This is a layer of neurons that apply the non-saturating activation function, max, between 0 and x. It creates the nonlinear property of the decision function and of the overall network without affecting the receptive field of the commercial layer. Other functions are also used to increase nonlinearity, for example, the 10h and the sigmoid function. Compared to the other functions, the usage of the ReLU is preferable because it results in a neural network that trains much faster, without making significant differences in generalization accuracy. It's important to note that an activation function doesn't have trainable weights, and therefore makes the model more expressive without adding parameters to the model. In this image, you can see different types of activation functions. You've got the 10H function in green, which is bounded between minus one and one, and saturates on both hands, we also have the sigmoid function, which is bounded between 0 and 1. And then we can see that the ReLU function has no gradients for values below 0, and then has a non-saturating linear function for positive numbers. Let's now look at the max pooling layer. This is a type of downsampling layer. In this category, there are several layers options, with max pooling being the most popular. This basically takes a filter, usually a 2x2 filter, and a stride of the same size. It then applies it to the input spatial features and output the maximum number in every subregion that the filter convolves around. Other options of pooling layers are average pooling and L2 norm pooling. The intuitive reasoning behind this layer is that once we know that the specific feature is in the original input volume, the exact location is not as important as its relative location to the other features. This layer drastically reduces the spatial dimension of the input tensor and it serves two main purposes. It reduces the amount of parameters and computation into the network, and controls for overfitting. In this image, you can see that the image was downsampled by a factor of 2, but the number of feature map didn't change. Max pooling basically extracts the most active features in the image while reducing the data size. Neural networks can quickly become very expressive which allow them to represent very complex function. This expressiveness is needed in image recognition due to their high dimensional and nonlinear nature. However, overly complex models can lead to the problem of overfitting, where after training, the weights of the network are so tuned to the training examples that the network doesn't perform well and can't generalize to new unseen examples. The solution is to apply regularization. There are many ways to regularize a neural network. A common method is to add L2 norm of the model's weights to the cost function. The L2 regularization has the intuitive interpretation of heavily penalizing peak weight vectors and preferring diffuse weights across the vector. 
This forces the network to use all of its inputs a little, rather than some of the inputs a lot. Dropout is an extremely effective and simple regularization technique that complements the other regularization methods. This layer drops out random sets of activation in that layer by setting them to zero in the forward pass. This forces the network to be redundant. That means that the network should be able to provide the right classification or output for the specific example, even if some of the activation are dropped out. During testing, there is no dropout, with the interpretation of evaluating an average prediction across the exponentially sized assemble of all the sub-networks. So, in conclusion, a CNN architecture is formed by stacking distinct layers that transform the input volume into an output volume holding the class calls through a differentiable function. The four main types of layers are the commercial layer and the fully connected layer, both of which have trainable parameters, and then you also have the pooling layer and the activation layer, which they don't have trainable parameters, but they make the model more efficient and more expressive. Below is an example of a CNN model that has six commercial layers. It takes in an image of a car and outputs class probabilities that represent the most likely object in the image.